This person said, I have talked to so many friends today who are just struggling with depression over the state of this country. We're all born again Christians, so we know that hope is to come. But many of us, even with opposing views, are just tired of the social unrest, the atmosphere of fear, and the questions over what the world will be like for our children and more. How can we practically encourage one another in this season? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a struggle that all of us are uh, facing and in the midst of. And tough stuff happened in, in our world. Uh, and, and during an age and a season where all of the tough stuff in the world is in our face all the time, you know, that there have been um, civil unrest and, and continuously in one segment of the world or another during every season of life. Uh, there's plagues and pandemics that are part of uh, human experience throughout human history in every corner of the world at different times. Uh, but there's injustice that's a part of the world since the fall of man and sin entered the world. Like there's, uh, throughout human history, there's always been brokenness. You know, living in a sin, we did a broken world. But we haven't always had the ability for that to be in our face in the every day, all day, the way that it is right now. And there are certainly some very positive aspects to that. Having a more connected society, a more connected world, uh, means that things that were overlooked before and were not given the attention that they deserve and need uh, were went unnoticed and allowed those uh, injustices to go on unnecessarily. And that people were not aware of them and so they couldn't be outraged by them and so they couldn't take action and engage them. So there's some real valuable uh, components to uh, having coordinated communication and access to those things. And there's a, there's a downside to that, that our bodies were not designed to be on hyper alert uh, of those things all the time. Like the uh, alarms going off in our brain and body that alert us to danger are very depleting to our body's resources. Right? That the adrenaline, the cortisol, the norepinephrine, that's a part of the adrenal response that comes with the alarm sounding in our body and sucks down the resources in our body by having us be on high alert. And unfortunately, that uh, when we're hyper alert, we're in that hyper vigilance, uh, part of that is uh, attuning to and focusing in on the potential threat, right? And that's part of how we avoid danger, you know, and move to safety that God's wired into us and wired into our bodies. But um, media resources have learned how to use that as a way of tuning us into the things that they want us to be tuned into. And so there's a leveraging of that hypervigilance in that system for ratings, kind of from a media standpoint, to, to get clicks on links, to get eyeballs attuned to crises, in the world because we're wired to focus in on crises. And so that's what we get a constant stream of coming at us. So there's a need to have some understanding about our body and how it's wired and how we're made in a way that enables us to be uh, wise in stewarding what comes into our eyes and our ears and our content. Because if we, we ingest the alarming content, our body is going to be on alarm. If we are in a chronic condition or a chronic state of that, that's going to create lead to depression because it depletes our resources within our body to such an extent that we get into a depressed state. And so 
having some understanding of the mechanics of that can allow us to be intentional about limiting the exposure that we have to these alarming kinds of things. And I'm not talking about sticking your head in the sand. Right? I'm not talking about being avoidant. I'm not talking about pretending like uh, these things don't matter, right? But you can, you can give attention to these things and come to the conclusion about what would the Lord have you to do with that information without it being a continuous stream of that into your mind. Like you can, you can limit like news intake to an hour a day, right? Like you can uh, set aside a block of time, uh, preferably earlier in the day, because later in the day gets you on high alert and interferes with your sleep and then has you starting the next day with less resources as your sleep's interfered with. But earlier in the day, mid-afternoon, checking in and seeing oh, what did I, what do I need to know today? Now, without having the constant notifications on your phone kind of come up and be in your face, right? That you can, you can snooze people in your Facebook feed. You know, those that are really suck into just a continuous feed and a re um, kind of reposting and sharing kind of continuous feed of um, these alarming pieces. It's okay to snooze them to clear out your feet a little bit so that you can engage in other aspects of life and engagement rather than continually being fixated on these things that uh, put the body into an alarm state of sorts. You can uh, set down with the current issues that are on uh, facing society presently. Look at how do they influence and impact your world and what are the things that the Lord would have you do with them and take a pen and a piece of paper pen and paper are really helpful because they're concrete and move those things out of your head and out of your heart prayerfully and what are the action steps what would the Lord have me do with these things and then focus your energy on those concrete things that you can do and take action on rather than just continuous exposure to things that you can't do anything and that just watching it isn't going to change anything or fix anything or benefit anybody in doing so and all of that helps steward your energy guard your mind in a way that helps you be in a healthier place and you can uh, encourage that in your relationships as well as you're encouraging one another move from spectating to action. We can encourage each other in these things and we can be intentional in our dialogue and interaction with others to uh, allow the conversation to kind of focus on things in life, in our family, outside of you know, all of the, the feed, rather than just kind of regurgitating that in our interpersonal interactions with folks. Mm, yeah, for sure. That is very great, just practical advice um, for encouraging one another and, and just being, you know, mindful and, you know, cautious really with our, our minds and our hearts right now in the world that we're in. So um, really appreciate that, Josh, um, and really appreciate the person that asked this question. So hopefully this was yeah. cool. Yeah.